Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Fire Mage on the Shadowlands beta. This spec has changed quite a bit, and I'm not sure it's for the better, so I'm gonna take a look at the baseline abilities that have been added or modified, the talents, the legendaries, covenants, conduits, and gameplay. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons who make all of this possible. If you'd like to check out my Patreon and consider supporting me, you can find the link in the description box. The first thing I want to cover is, of course, the baseline changes, spells that have been added to the spec, um, as well as what's been changed. All three of the mage specs essentially got one of each other's abilities. So Fire Mage got Arcane Explosion and Frostbolt. Um, Arcane Explosion can be used as an AoE filler if you're on the move and you're out of like instant cast. Um, as for Frostbolt, it's most likely going to see use in Arena. Um, having an on-demand 50% slow, it is still a 1.8 second cast time, uh, so fairly long cast time, but one of the big downsides of Fire Mage was always that it didn't have any type of slows. You had roots through uh, Frost Nova, but if you had to chase someone down and they were faster than you, it was a little bit difficult. So having Frostbolt in Arena is probably going to be quite nice. Then we also got Mirror Images back, however now it's more of a defensive uh, button rather than an offensive one. Um, you get 20% DR, and each time you take direct damage, one of your mirrors actually disappears. So overall it's a fairly decent little defensive cooldown that got added to the toolkit. I'm pretty happy about it, and there's still the cheese where um, if you're casting on the mage while he casts Mirror Images, your cast will retarget to them. So it's going to be quite strong in PvP. Another baseline change to the spec has been made to Combustion. Um, so similar to Icy Veins and Arcane Power, now whenever you cast Combustion, you drop a Rune of Power. This is a pretty nice quality of life change just because it reduces your setup time by one global. And it also ensures that you get exactly the same amount of uptime on your Rune of Power as you do on your Combustion, since they line up perfectly. So overall, it's a good change for quality of life, however, it is a slight DPS loss just because you get less Rune of Power casts uh, per minute since your Rune of Power talent now only has one charge. But it does mean that um, there's a little bit more of an incentive to maybe taking some of the other talents in that row. And as for probably the most controversial change they made to Fire Mage, the Ignite rework. So the Mastery, Ignite, um, essentially stacks up a dot on your target based on the direct damage you deal to it. More direct damage you deal, the higher your ignite stacks. Previously, this was what made mages so strong in mythic raiding, because you would combust your main target, and that ignite would spread to all secondary targets, dealing a huge amount of damage. Um, and especially with very high mastery towards the end of BFA, this got a little bit out of hand. But I think that should be blamed more on the corruption system rather than how the ability itself worked. So the change they made to Ignite is that it is now a single target dot. So whenever you combust, all the direct damage that you deal to a target will convert into Ignite, but it will not spread to nearby targets. In order to actually spread it to nearby targets, you need to press Phoenix Flames, which was an ability that has been added as a baseline spell. It has three charges, 25 second recharge time, 40 yard range and it does damage to your primary target um, and then reduce damage to secondary targets. This is essentially what you use to spread your ignite. So now instead of it being done automatically, you need to actually think about when you want to spread that ignite from your main target to secondary targets. And this is pretty tricky. Um, it is kind of annoying to play with just because you need to actually keep an eye on like how big the ignite is based on how much damage you dealt to the target because if the target is ticking for like 100 damage then that ignite is probably not worth spreading you want to build up a bigger ignite and then spread that one to nearby targets um, another big change they made to phoenix flames was that it is no longer a guaranteed crit so previously Phoenix Flames was a talent and if you took it um, as well as back in Legion it was a guaranteed crit and essentially worked like a fire blast that was on the global cooldown that dealt more damage. 
So now that it's no longer a guaranteed crit, its primary function is to spread ignite. That is outside of combustion. When you're inside of combustion, obviously it has a 100% crit chance, so you still use it um, like you did previously, but only change you want to make is that typically now you use it towards the tail end of your combustion because that's when your ignite is bigger, so that's when you want to spread it to secondary targets. Next, let's take a look at the talents. Um, first up, we have Rune of Power. Obviously, like I said, it has been nerfed to so now only have one charge. And also in this row, Focus Magic has been added in place of Mirror Images. You essentially give someone 5% crit, and whenever they crit, you get 5% crit in return for 10 seconds. Um, in general, not exactly sure how useful it will be, just because of Rune of Power and how it synergizes with some of our spells. Then in the level 35 row, Alexstrasza's Fury has been buffed. Now, whenever you press it, um, damage of your next Pyroblast or Flame Strike is increased by 35%. I'm not 100% sure how this interacts with Pyroclasm. So with Pyroclasm plus Alexstrasza's Fury, you might be able to get some pretty big hard casted Pyroblasts. But then again, playing without Flame on, especially now that Phoenix Flames is not a guaranteed crit, um, is probably going to be a little annoying. And then a new talent in this row is From the Ashes. It increases your mastery by 2% for each charge of Phoenix Flames off cooldown and your direct damage critical strikes reduce its cooldown by one second. So this will just allow you to press Phoenix Flames more often and you also get some extra mastery. So overall, pretty boring talent. We'll see how it's going to work out. Then in the last row, uh, Kindling has been buffed to give you 1.5 second CDR instead of one. And Pyroclasm has also been buffed slightly to increase the damage of your um, Hardcast Pyroblast by a little more it went up from 210% to 240%. So overall, not super impactful changes, but there were some tweaks here and there in the talent tree. Next, taking a look at the Covenants for Kyrian, we have Radiant Spark. So Radiant Spark is a little counterintuitive to play, and it has pretty much anti-synergy with Fire Mage, just because of the way Fire Mage works. Um... On Frostmage, for example, you're able to get four back-to-back -back Ice Lances, so you make pretty good use of the Kyrian um, debuff on your target. As a Fire Mage, you need to weave filler spells or builder spells between your Pyros, so every other ability does essentially no damage. So pretty much no matter what you do, two of the charges that will empower your abilities against the target will be wasted on either Fire Blast uh, casts or Phoenix Flames casts. Normally you would want all four of those to be consumed with Pyros, but just because of how Mage plays, it's not really doable. So unfortunately Kyrian is very weak for Fire from what I've uh, experienced. Then for Venthyr we have Mirrors of Torment. This might be okay just because it gives you some Fire Blast cooldown, so you're able to get essentially one, maybe two extra Fire Blasts in your Combustion which might be quite nice, um, especially with one of the legendaries that I will talk about a little bit later. So going Venthyr might be the play, just because it enhances your combustion a little bit. One downside is that Mirrors of Torment is a one and a half minute cooldown, so maybe if Kindling ends up being the play, um, they will line up, but otherwise you will have to sit on one of those cooldowns um, to ensure that they line up with each other. Then for Necrolord, we have Deathborn. Uh, this is a 3 minute cooldown, so again, it doesn't line up with Fire Mage cooldowns. So maybe, like I said again, with Kindling, we might have about a 1.5 minute combustion, but that varies throughout the expansion depending on how much crit you have, how much haste you have, so it's not like a reliable solid number. So Deathborn could be quite strong, and obviously paired with combustion is going to be pretty powerful, but it doesn't line up with every single combustion. And that's the big downside of it. Then for Night Fae, we have Shifting Power. So Shifting Power could be pretty decent because it's going to get you a pretty large amount of CDR on your combustion. And Fire Mage does almost no AoE damage um, outside of its cooldowns, so it might help you out in that regard as well. Big downside again is that you have to be in melee. And also, it loses a ton of value on single target, just because 
its damage is tuned pretty much for AoE. Next for the legendaries, uh, probably the primary legendary that most mages are using at the moment is Sun King's Blessing. After consuming 6 hot streaks, your next non-instant pyroblast cast within 15 seconds grants you combustion for 6 seconds. So this one is really interesting to play with because if you start from scratch, no stacks built up, in your combustion you will get 6 or 7 um, hot streak procs. And that means that right after your main combustion is over, you can drop a rune of power, hard cast another pyroblast and get another 6 seconds of combustion. So you essentially get 16 second combustions and then intermittently you will get like mini combustions in between. So it's very interesting to play with. In Mythic Plus I found it very finicky just because sometimes by the time you built up 6 stacks, the pack is dead and you're moving on to the next one and 15 seconds is not a long time, especially when you have to hard cast a Pyroblast which for me is a 4 second cast. So in reality, you only have about 11 seconds to get to a new mob and start attacking it. So sometimes that doesn't work out quite the way you want it. But in general, a very interesting legendary and I think it might be pretty powerful for mythic raiding. Next one we have Disciplinary Command. Uh, casting a Frost, Fire and Arcane spell within 10 seconds of each other increases your critical strike damage of all your spells by 10%. This effect can only occur once every 30 seconds. So obviously in Combustion, all your damage is Critical Strike damage. So this essentially reads increase all your damage by 10% during Combustion. Um, it procs every 30 seconds, so you're not going to make super good use of it um, in the procs that are not during Combustion. That's the big downside. I'd much rather see this proc every minute and give you 20% increase rather than the 10% increase every 30 seconds. So that is the big downside of this. Then we have Fevered Incantation. Each consecutive critical strike you deal increases your critical strike damage by 2% up to 10%. So this might be really strong later on in the expansion when we actually have enough crit to reliably deal back-to-back -back critical strike damage. Um, outside of that, especially early on in the ex expansion, I don't think it will be too useful. Those are pretty much the Fire Mage legendaries that I think might see some play potentially. Um, Firestorm, not exactly sure how strong it is. Molten Skyfall seems very weak. This is kind of the equivalent to the Frozen Orb one that Frost Mage has, but Meteor and Frozen Orb function very differently and serve very different purposes. Um, so I'm not sure why this is even a Fire legendary. Next, taking a look at the conduits, and first up we have Control Destruction. Pyroblast damage is increased by X% percent based on conduit rank. Um, so getting extra Pyroblast damage, super useful, um, both on single target and on AoE, since most of our damage does come from Ignite on AoE. So extra Pyro damage, always good, but boring. Then we have Infernal Cascade. While Combustion is active, your Fire Blast get, grants you increased fire damage for 5 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. This is essentially Blaster Master, Azrite trait from BFA repackaged, so now instead of giving you mastery, it just gives you extra fire damage. Then we have Flame um, at creation. Fireball grants 5% mastery when it fails to critically strike. So this one is a little bit weird. Just because the later on in the expansion you go, the more crit you will have, so the less useful this becomes. So, a little counterintuitive. Then we have Master Flame. Flame Strike's damage and radius are increased by 6%. On paper, pretty good, but I found that the most popular legendary, Sun Kings, doesn't stack whenever you use Hot Streak procs on Flame Strike. So you end up having to not play Flame Strike unless you are going to use a different legendary or you lose out on a ton of value. So again, it just seems like for Fire Mage in particular, um, some of the conduits don't exactly align or synergize with the rest of the toolkit, which I'm a little sad about. All right, so now let's talk about the gameplay. How is Fire to play with the rework, with everything that's been done to Ignite, to Combustion? On single target and for short burst windows, Fire is still extremely strong. Um, I took it to some Mythic Plus, tried to see if I could line up everything for bosses just to see the type of damage I was able to do, and it has very competitive damage. 
The downside is that outside of combustion, it's going to do essentially no damage, and especially now that Ignite doesn't passively spread. Um, Phoenix Flames is extremely frustrating to use outside of combustion because it doesn't guarantee you a crit. Ideally, I hope that they return it to its previous state where it would spread Ignite and guarantee crit, just because sometimes you just don't want to press the button because you might lose a heating up proc um, or something along those lines. So while on single target, it's pretty strong, and during our combustion, it's pretty strong, Fire Mage still does no damage outside of his cooldowns, which has been the case in the past as well, so that's not surprising to see. However, I think that the diminishing returns that they're introducing to secondary stats in Shadowlands is going to hit Fire Mage especially hard. Towards the end of BFA, with a bunch of Masterful Corruption stacked up and Mastery gear, Fire Mages were able to reach insane amounts of Mastery, and that was partly why they became so strong. With secondary stats having diminishing returns, you're no longer going to be able to stack Mastery efficiently. So that also means that our Ignite is already nerfed just by them introducing that system. So on top of that, having a secondary nerf to it, because now it's a single target thing that you have to spread, I think might be a little bit too much. So typically Fire Mage um, is good in like the last tier, last two tiers of an expansion. This expansion, it might take until the very last tier for us to have enough stats for Fire Mage to be competitive. And that is very sad to see because normally you want to see the meta kind of change uh, from tier to tier. But I fear that with the changes they made to the spec and the changes they made to secondary stats, and especially some of the legendaries and the way they interact with the kit, it might take quite a bit of time for Fire Mage to be actually competitive. Um, that is, unless they receive a baseline buff. Um, while it is still an extremely fun spec to play, and they have definitely added a whole other level of micromanagement to it with the Ignite thing, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it, um, just because it is going to be very unfriendly for new players to learn and also going to be very unfriendly for early on in the expansion when we have very few secondary stats and very few things that synergize with our kit. So let me know what you think about the Fire Mage in the comment section below. Do you think they deserve the Ignite nerf or do you think Blizzard took it a little bit too overboard? Either way, I'd love to hear your opinion and thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more like it and I'll see you on the next one.